Welcome to the Golden Age of Cardboard podcast, where we remember a time when stacks of cards were held together with rubber bands and Mickey Mantles were put in bike spokes. We hope you will enjoy and reminisce as you come along with us as we tell stories about the baseball cards from the golden age of baseball. We will examine the state of the vintage baseball card market and talk to some of the greatest collectors in the hobby. You won't be hearing us talk about any chrome or shiny cards here. Now, to take you on this retrospective journey, here's your host, direct from the shallow end of the gene pool, my son, Mike Moynihan. Yo, and hello, everybody. Mike here. Welcome to another episode of the Golden Age of Cardboard podcast. I'm your host this week, every week. You know, totally didn't plan on doing an episode this weekend and this week. In fact, this is going to be probably the <laughs> least amount of prep I've ever done for an episode. I am literally going to shoot the bull with my buddy, John, and we're going to do that in just a second. Um, I will definitely not be doing an episode next week, Thanksgiving week, uh, but I will be back the following week. I've got a lot of cool stuff in mind for the show, and so be patient. I just really wanted to give you guys something this week, and I was thinking about John. I was like, man, I haven't talked to John in a while. John Keating is who I'm talking about. You'll meet him in a second. He's been on the show before. He's ugly, but he is funny. So luckily, if you're listening on podcast, you don't have to see him but you can hear him. He does a great job on his podcast, his show, That 70s Card Show. But I've got a few topics that are just on my mind and I wanted to shoot the bull with him. And I'm like, well, why not record it? So let's just get him on here. What's up, Mr. Keating? Hey, speaking of shooting the bull, I've got a ribeye defrosting upstairs. So very topical, Michael. You know, I, I knew it. that actually. Yeah. Uh, we got three hours till it defrosts. So hit me with whatever you want to hit me. <laughs> I, I think we'll be, you'll, you'll have plenty of time to, to right. deal with that. Right. Uh, as much as I love shooting the bull, I don't want to bore everyone, but I've had some just thoughts about what's going on. Uh, and it's all going to be about vintage because that's kind of my jam, but um, I do want to ask you, I sent you some cards. I had gone to, we had gone from chasing cardboard to consign a collection from a gentleman named Glenn that episode aired a couple of weeks ago and you were bought some comments for some sets for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Was it football? I can't know. They were baseball. It's like 58 tops. I think 58 tops. There was some football in there. You threw a couple of, um, I think an Eagles thing in there and stuff like yeah, that. That's right, so that's right. Mostly 58 tops though. Well, what's interesting is from that whole collection, there were a ton of cards that were, that had, I'll call them imperfections. Either, either Glenn, when he was a kid, like wrote an X on the back, or they were kind of kind of rough, you know. And right. and so I was finding a hard time getting people interested in them. And what I ended up doing was just buying them all myself. And I really had told myself I wasn't going to do that because a it it ended up you know it's a lot of cards so. Right. To be fair to Glenn, it was not, you know, small potatoes money wise. And, but I'm like, you know, I really want to get all the sets eventually. Right. That's kind of a long term, kind of lifetime goal is to have every tops card that's ever been made. Base right. tops card, right? Flagship. Is that, is that a project, lifelong project for you too? Or, I've, yeah, I've been working on that for 47 years. <laughs> I wanted every baseball card ever made, but you got to remember back in the mid, mid 70s, even though it was unattainable, it was a lot more realistic than it is now. Certainly. Uh, but what's your cutoff? Like, do you have a cutoff? I, I just bought probably three hours ago, I just bought another 30,000 cards. Oh my goodness. And it's football, it's basketball, it's hockey, it's it's got everything in it. So so we'll see. I mean, I don't, I don't have a cutoff. Uh, I, I, you go through phases where is, you know, the more content you watch, the more you see how people are more focused than I am. And you think you're doing something wrong. But um, 
I came to the realization last year that why not just keep going? You know, I could just do my thing. I don't need to focus on one thing. I can, you know, I've always thought collecting was a matter of opportunity. Uh, if you go into a show with 10 cards you want and you don't get those 10 cards, the show is a, is a zero. But if you have an open mind and an opportunity presents itself, whether it's modern, vintage, junk wax, then go for it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, and I, I've, I've so teeter-tottered back and forth on, on the vintage sets because le- legitimately I go through, I really have focused for a long, long time on just getting the Hall of Famers. Because so I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm going to get, I do want all the Hall of Famers for sure. And why not, right? And then right. do I really need a Choo Choo Coleman or a, you know, what, whoever, pick your common. And I, I've, again, it's like you said, an opportunity so I had an opportunity to pick these cards up. They're here. They're they're not in great shape, so they're not expensive. And I can get them and just have them, right. right? And so the first decision for me anyway, and a lot of you guys out there may wrestle with this maybe constantly, but do I, you know, do I want to go down this whatever project, right? Because it can cost time and certainly money. Right. And the last thing you want to do is get knee deep into a project and then abandon it because you're either dissatisfied or, or you're out of money or whatever. You're like, ah, then you have to either resell them and I'll just resell them. It's not that like, it's not hard, but it's, it's a pain in the rear, right? I'd just rather not have gotten myself into the pickle to begin with. Well, you don't have to, again, you can have several things going right now. My main focus other than collecting every card ever made is 58 and 68 tops. I have 23 58s left and I think 43 68s left. And I just knocked out a hundred 68s and I got four 58s at Burbank sports cards last weekend. How was that shop by the way? That shop, it's probably my third or fourth visit there. And there was some, the first time was awesome. Uh, and then the second time stuff disappeared, uh, 60s common stuff like that. I'm done the 70s, so I don't need anything in the 70s as far as base sets. But uh, they revamped it, and now they have the th- uh, thing called the fishbowl, where that's where all the old commons are, and it's great. I love it. He's, uh, you know, a lot of respect for him. You know, kind of like the he runs one aspect of his business, like it's kind of the Amazon of the industry where he's got 40 million cars. But you walk into the shop and there's slabs for days in the display cases. And then you go back and you start picking through the other stuff. And I bought a lot of I bought a lot of uh, stuff uh, from him. And, you know, he gave me a slight discount. But then when you he told me himself, he goes, these are already marked down. And and true. I mean, the, the, the value he had on the cards was was way low. So uh, on top of that, a slight discount is, is even better. But uh, he prices the stuff to move, which is great. It doesn't mess around. Yeah. Uh, Rob Bears, who you're talking about. Yep. Yep. Right. Absolutely. Uh, Busy man. He, he's he's juggling, you know, so many balls in the air at once, but he he's, he pulls it off. You know, he, he knows what he's doing, obviously. Been around a long time. Yeah, that's a bucket list shop for me. Um, I'm planning on doing an L.A. trip to go to a Burbank show. Mm-hmm. And then go to the shop and hang out with uh, my buddy Josh out there. Um, maybe go to a get Dodgers game or like try to do it where I can kind of right. really make a, a memorable experience and do multiple things. Right. Um, otherwise, why go to L.A. at all? <laughs> yeah, I was just there for two weeks. Tell me about it. And I'm going back in another 10 days. So, wow. Well, lucky you. Yeah. But in dealing with these vintage sets that I've, you know, again, the opportunity presented itself for me to just get about a thousand fifties cards. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, all right, you know, and okay. I'm, I've got those like I'm doing, but I want to put them in binders, you know? Right. I, I bought my first sideways pages for the 56 tops. And so, you know, I've got a bunch of holes and, you know, they're not complete sets because we did sell right. quite a few of them, but there's a bunch left over and I, now I'm kind of like going, well, I should have just bought them all myself because I'm still now I'm really going to have to go complete these sets. Like until this moment, at least it was kind of hey, I'll do that down the road. You know, yeah, it's like anything you have to buy. 
uh, starter sets because we obviously we're right. not pulling them out of packs. So my method is Huggins and Scott sells a lot of that stuff. There's Facebook pages that sell starter sets. I just bought a starter set of 66. So I'm, you know, to go on whatever I had, I'm probably three quarters done that now. So, uh, yeah, it's yeah, Huggins and Scott was great because I bought, I got like 150, 1953 tops cards, right? Probably between ones and threes, I guess, but that's all right for me because I, I don't, it doesn't bother me. I'd rather have all the cards and then you can work on it. Right. Um, you know, I bought, I bought 150 cards at Burbank. The guy next to me, who I sat in, or I was standing next to and spoke to him for an hour about cards. He walked out with exactly one 1970 tops common because oh, he, wow. he, he was, he had his loop and he was looking at every card. And I, I don't think I'm ever going to get to that part where I am um, in the upgrade mode because I'd rather complete all the sets and then, and then complete other sets. You know, I, I bought a 1960 Brooks Robinson from Mike O this week for $2. Okay. If I get, if I get a, a quality one later on, that's great. But now I have a 1960 Brooks Robinson $2 to cost me, you know? Yeah. I, I get, I totally feel that mentality. And there, you know, the great thing about card collecting, one of the many great things is the ability to just kind of a go at your own pace, B mm -hmm. work within any budget probably you can collect a vintage set it, it will take you a long time right? right but you can do it and card by card and there i see the guys at the shows that you know are really uh conditioned nazis you know yep um i mean that and i, I just used the a bad word for that uh, like kanye now man i know golly um they're very condition sensitive yeah right and so that they really want every card to be as good as they can get it. Yeah. And they'll pay up for it. Right. Right. You know? Right. Um, my 68 set who I would, like I said, I have about 40 cards left. It's between threes and fives, V VG and excellent. And that's okay for me. It's in a binder. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's great. Are you a binder guy for set? Well, that's, you know, we, as hobbyists, no matter where you are in the hobby, you're, you're, you're always wrestling with things and multiple things at once. So I have right now, my 69 through 70 sets are all bindered up. My 80 set, uh, I keep threatening to binder it. Uh, my 68 set is in a binder, but beyond that, I have, uh, everything's in penny sleeves. I have a monster box of fifties, a monster box of sixties, and all penny sleeved and with dividers, all that stuff. So I just bought a 55 Ernie Banks, right? Again, right. from Mike O, and that's that's in a monster box, uh, penny sleeve. So got to have your vintage sleeves, Mike, and you have to have your regular ones. Don't that's forget right. that. Yeah, I'm I'm really, I want my sets and binders. Mm -hmm. I've decided that, that I really enjoy them more that way. Uh, right. For decades now mine have primarily they're in boxes you know all from right. 73 to now are all in boxes and that's show you over there right so yeah but you have a lot more space you have an entire basement i do i, I have a little bedroom and you've been in this bedroom yeah. you know how small it is it's not exactly you know the yeah. top hall of cards here um, There's more room when you're not in there. Just Norman and I, it's okay. But uh, right. when, you're, when you're spreading your CO2 all over the place, it's, it gets true. uncomfortable. Uh, That's true. Um, Norman says hi, by the way. I, had to, uh, okay. wanted me to tell you, I told him I was talking to you, and he's like, well, tell John hello, because he's my favorite. Tell him I'll be by. I'll be um, by. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but I really do eventually want to try to figure out a way to accommodate my binders in a way that I can display them and have them easily accessible. And right. Because that's just fun. Right. It is. They're great that they'll look at. They're, they're, they're awesome to look at um, for sure. One thing but, that I do that's different is in my binders, you know, I have mostly slabs, right? You, you've seen the beast mm -hmm. the slabs of all the hall of famers. So my friend JT will print all of my slabs. He, he has my login to my PSA registry. Right. So he'll go log in and he'll pull all the, let's say the 56s, which is, he just finished those today. He told me, so he printed all the 56s. He's cutting them out. He, he, you make the ratio correct so that it, even with the slab, it'll be the size of the card. And what, what size is that for the 56? 
uh, I don't remember. It's bigger. Okay. Is he going to do that? Is he going to do that? Heck, yeah. he's going to go yep. slightly bigger. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever the dimensions, are. you know, three and a half by five and a half on regular cards and then whatever it is for. Or, or two and a half by three and a half. One or two and, that too, too. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Card that, I, that I can remember. Yeah. So there, he's going to make make those. And I put those in the slot in the binder yeah. for that card because the thing that bugs me more than anything is an open space, right? Some people put little, they'll put a little slip of paper in there and write the name on it, uh -huh. who it is, or I want to see the card. So, yeah, that's a great, that's a great hack. And every time I go through my binders, I, I forget that and I have to do it. Uh, one thing I do, I have over here, over here, wherever that is behind me is all my Yaz cards and one of the displays. So I have multiple Yaz cards, so that helps. Uh, yeah, but but sometimes there are holes in there for my for my graded stuff, which I don't have much, probably about a hundred slabs, but there are holes in there. I have to admit, I, I've been first of all, I've been traveling. I went to Cuba mm -hmm. um, for a week or almost a week, six days, and I, you know, holidays and and I've been traveling a lot with chasing cardboard and seeing these amazing collections. We have an episode debuting tonight, as a matter of fact, for the first part of our West Virginia trip, which was awesome, unbelievable. And I brought back dozens and dozens of cards that I bought directly from that collection for me, which is one of the benefits of seeing it first. I get to go, yeah, I need that. And yeah, I need right, that. And I need right. that. And there was way more that I needed than I could have, than I that I wanted to buy in the, in the moment, just from a cost standpoint, but what's the kind of where I'm in this weird purgatory right now is I've got 150 cards at PSA for different projects, you know, mm -hmm. mostly vintage hall of fame runs. And, uh, it's, I don't know. It's frustrating. I'm sitting here going any day now, you know, come on guys. And, I just saw the list, you know, it's, it's, I think broken up over six orders and you know, the $18 deal is okay. That's way better than, you know, 50, right. Yep. Still not where I'd like it to be and where I'd really feel comfortable sending in low level hall of famers and stuff like that. But, That's all you can send in low level stuff, right? You can't. Right. You Cause can't it's only max it. value of $199. Yeah. So right. you can't yeah. send in a mantle or a this mm -hmm. or that, but I've got all these cards out there under multiple orders. It's funny. I looked this morning. One of them that I sent six weeks after the first one is already in assembly. The other ones are still stuck in grading. I'm like, I, I've stopped trying to understand the methodology yeah. of PSA. It makes mm -hmm. zero sense to me. Uh, to me, it's a conveyor belt, right? It should be just like a card a order comes in. It goes on the conveyor yep. belt and yep. somebody it goes along and somebody picks it up. And you don't pick up the next one in the conveyor belt until the other one's done, but whatever, you know, so I've yeah. got, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm in this purgatory of, I want to go look for cards, but I've got so much else going on. And I don't remember, I, I guess we all have periods like this where we're either busy or distracted or, you know, whatever. Mine just happens to be a PSA induced because even though I've marked yeah. which cards are out there, kind of waiting to come back right um there I, I i also have this pending money of once the p once they hit right i'm going to get charged for the order will i get up charged on anything you know i i, I kind of again in this purgatory and financially it's thousands of dollars of grading right. fees you know that i'm that i've got coming to me so to speak that i'm going to have to pay the piper on once they hit Plus several of the cards that I bought or that I have in orders, I don't technically own yet because they're Glenn's cards and I sent them off saying, well, I'll just buy them when they come back. I'll pay, you know, market value of right. whatever grade they are. Well, I'm worried because some of them might be in really good shape <laughs> and then I'll be like, crap. Yeah, but you can always sell them though, right? You're going to, you can move them. That's the great thing about it. And I think, as you, uh, you know, you and I talked on the phone uh, a little while back uh, before we started this, I was watching the video where uh, Dave said that it was a kind of a subtle point that 
dealers aren't moving vintage because that in, the, in his opinion is that indicates it's stable, which makes sense. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just not a sell off and all that stuff. So you're not going to have a hard time selling that regardless of macroeconomics. True. Uh, vintage is one of those things that, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in our country and our world. Um, I promise you after going to Cuba, life in the United States looks pretty good. Uh, yep. things down there are worse than I've ever seen. And that was my fourth time to go there. And, uh, the people there are just, there's no food, there's no, you know, fuel. Uh, it is just as bad as I've ever seen it economically. And that and makes sense. Yeah. I mean, and we're bitching about cards, right? right. First world problems. Let's, uh -huh. let's keep it in perspective. And, but that is one good reason about going is I try to, I try to do it several times a year where I go and it's a great spiritual and mental kind of just reset. Like, okay, uh -huh. you know, whatever problems I have <laughs> are minor. Yeah. You know, I do the same. I go to Walmart once a year and I get, uh, I get, it's like a bucket of water being poured over my head. <laughs> what, why does Walmart do that for you? <laughs> Walmart's up here, crazy man. Oh, are they? Yeah, it's like uh, you know, there used to be a Florida man, you know, and then you read the news story and it says that makes sense. It's the same thing now at Walmart. My wife goes to Walmart. She says she loves Walmart, but every time she comes home, she says, "You wouldn't believe what was going on in the parking lot." And absolutely, I would believe what's going on in that parking lot. Hmm. So that's a long way to go uh, for a bad joke. So how do you deal with the? periods where you just feel either disconnected from the, or do you have periods where you feel disconnected or just take a break or whatever? Yeah. Well, fortunately for me, uh, uh, um, I have uh, forced periods, right. If I go away for two or three weeks and it's in a, a place that is kind of a cool, you know, a hobby void, um, you know, LA, I can go to Burbank, Orlando, I can go to Orlando sports cards, uh, but if I go to some other place where I don't feel a connection to the hobby, it's, I get out of it for a while and it's, it's, uh, it's all right, but you do get the itch to have something I, you know, I could spend thousands and thousands of dollars ordering stuff off of eBay, but I like, to, I typically, I like to get stuff in person. So if that's not available, then, uh, that's a kind of a forced hiatus, temporary hiatus. So, um, one thing right now, we're we're in November right now. Uh, one, this is probably the first time. Well, it is the first time since I came out of my little hobby shell that I get to think of other people for the holidays, which is awesome. So that's that's one thing that occupies my mind right now is getting people things, little little tokens and gifts for uh, the holidays. And it's tough. I was talking to somebody about this today. Is I can't buy you a card because you either have all the cards you want, or I don't know what's in your head. And I know you have relationships with people that they do know what you want, but I did get you something that you don't have and it's going to be awesome, but that's, that's part of the joy. So you decided to get me a 52 tops mantle. Thank you so much. You're welcome. John. You're welcome. And it's right out of the river. I bought it right off of uh, tops <laughs> right out of the river. So, uh, yeah, so it's stuff like that that helps, right? If you can, uh, you know, instead of getting away from your own obsession, what you need, what you want, all that stuff, it's it's fun to think of getting stuff for uh, other people too, which is fun. Well, maybe you can help me because I genuinely, I'm a, I feel like I, I'm a gener, I want to be a generous person. I want to give back. My problem is, I don't have like do. It's not like I have three Carl Yastrzemski 68 topses, then oh, I only need one really, you know, kind of thing. Um, I struggle with that because so many people are great to me and I've already gotten my first Christmas present from uh, Brad and it was fantastic. And either, I don't know if I, I wish I should, I should ask him like, did he buy it? Did he already have it? It was just extra, right. you know, um, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I feel like I want to be generous and I'm like, I don't know where to even start <laughs> because. And it doesn't have to be, they don't have to be bangers. It just has to be something like you would buy a gift, like your kid would buy you a gift. It's right. the thought that counts. Right. So. Um, a tie that I'll never wear. Right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
but that's yeah. you know that's that's fun this time of year i mean the, the 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 hobby never stops giving which is awesome i mean i receive stuff that i i get bogged down on trying to figure out what i should get people because i uh, i analyze uh, you know i'm an analytical person so i'm constantly thinking and rethinking and all that stuff so that part gets frustrating when you're trying to get somebody something but well they already have that or they might already have that or maybe they don't want that you know stuff like that so what i do love about about it though is like when you were here i gave you a 51 tops gil hodges right right and i think it was your first 51 tops card yep right yep and the thing is, that was easy for me to give you because I already had one. Like I, right. I looked right. and I went, "Well, I didn't mean to buy that. <laughs> Who would love that? John would yeah. love that. Let me give that. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it, it's easy to give away extra stuff right. for me. Like I don't mind. Like if I have three of something, sure. You know, when kids come over, especially, um, you know, I have, I don't know, thirty-five Buck Leonard autographs or what. I don't need thirty-five. Right. So right. I'll be like. Hey, who's your favorite player? Who's your whatever? Who's your favorite ranger? Who's your favorite whatever? I prom I probably have multiple autographs of whoever it is, and I try to give it to the kid to a kid, maybe to inspire them, or they've never collected, or they just love baseball and they've never collected. Hey, here's something to take home to remember coming over to Mike's house and that kind of thing, and and that's fun, so right. much fun. Uh, I do it for hey. adults. Yeah. yeah. You give them the flu and you give them a card. That's pretty uh, generous of you. I am over the flu. I probably gave Dave the yeah. flu though, and and Kate yeah. and they were here. But uh, got to keep it going. Keep it going. Yeah, it's hey, it's once it gets, uh, what's it called? Where it floods an area? What do they call that when they when we had COVID and we wanted herd immunity? Right. Yeah. That's what we'll get with the flu this year. Um, so you're good. you're getting back to this. You are diving into being. Uh, and I know uh, what people don't know about you. A lot of people don't know about you is, you know, they see the beast back there and they see your display case, but you have a closet full of cards. They don't realize that you have sets and stuff like that. Um, what's the, what's the earliest set you have complete? Is it 73 or 70? 60. 60. Okay. So you have that done, but now so you're. I, I have everything for through 73 and then I have 70. With I need like four or five cards for two cards, maybe for 70. Mm -hmm. um, 65 is complete. 60 is complete. And then now I've got 56, 57, 58, 59, all partially mm -hmm. complete, thanks to Glenn's stuff. Um, so I'm so just... How, how did you complete those sets, those ones before this current crossroads? Uh, was it, you know, did you buy a set? Did you buy a 65 set? Or how did you go about... So 60 was um, doing it just like you said. I bought a big starter set and then I went on and I maybe needed like 80 cards after that. Mm -hmm. And so I went on sport lots okay. and bought some singles, you know, and I, you know, sport lots, you got to be, I wish it would be better at, Hey, just show me this, you know, whoever this person is right. And, and buy from the same seller so I can, combined yeah. and all that it, yeah. it's a little cumbersome for that but you can do it it's just it, it takes a little more time they, they could streamline that uh because no. anything you can buy anything i my i don't right. like to do that i i don't i don't buy i don't like the complete sets via ebay i think it's way more thrilling to get stuff at burbank get stuff from cooter lev get stuff from right. Lee, Lee champion they send me stuff and it's like my set is a you know, it's, 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 it's organic and it was, there's memories attached to that set. Uh, you know, you can complete any set on the internet, but you know, an, an example is the, or four examples would be the national. I finished four sets at the national, right? So I'll never forget those four sets being completed at the national. That's, that's the thrill there. So, sure. uh, I, I find that that's where I get the buzz is, um, you know, picking the cards up in person, you know, and I, I buy plenty of cards online, but most of those cards are kind of unique items um, that some that you won't find, like you won't find, you know, the 1970s, uh, 70 or 72 all time greats 3D set, whether it's the pretzel one or the Kellogg's one, you won't find that at shows normally, you'll find singles. So you have to think outside the box for that. But I have the um, 72 set complete. 
You uh, sure? Did you have you looked at those lately? Is there a different one that I'm missing? No, I'm just saying I found out I bought the 72 set, right? As a complete set, and uh, Mark Hoyle uh, said, "Oh, look at look at the trademark on there," and it turns out it was the um, instead of the Kellogg set, I had the rolled gold set, which was 1970. Well, mine are all slabbed, so I would think that uh, it, they would get that right. It, it, I have a rolled gold Gehrig. Okay. From 70. Yeah. So I um, lucked out there. It's, you know, whatever. It's a 30 to 50% premium on top. And I, I ended up getting it for, I was getting frustrated because I kept trying to get this set at shows. And I finally, and I got outbid. I finally said, screw it. I'll buy it for a hundred bucks or whatever. And it turns out it was the more expensive set. So I lucked out. Right. My 65 set. Interesting story. I, Went to MM7 Sports, my buddy Mike, who owns that up in, mm -hmm. in Oklahoma. And I bought so much stuff from him. And I was like, I really like the 65 tops. I mean, it's just a cool looking set. Beautiful I set. Flags. I love the color combination. I mean, uh, it's just great. And you have so, the two best sets of the 60s, by the way. You, I know. You, you That's why I did completion. those two first, because yeah. they're my two favorite. 60 is my favorite set I'm, from the 60s. Maybe my favorite set of all time is 60 tops. I go back and forth on that. 65 is my second favorite in the 60s for sure. And so MM7 had a whole set, like an extra set, what he would call a low-grade set. And I would call them all beautiful. Cards. Mm -hmm. like, I'm yeah. like, you're crazy if you think this is low-grade. But whatever, you know, they're your cards. So I said, look, he had a price on the whole set. And I said, look, I don't need any Hall of Fame. I got every Hall of Famer. Yeah, Take yeah. all the Hall of Famers out, and then what will you sell it to me for? And so he pulled all the mantles. He pulled even all the checklist cards with the man, everything. Yep. Right. Yep. And I'm like, pulls out, you know, there's a lot of hall of famers represented in the 65 top set. And so he's like, well, what do you, what do you want to do for the rest of them? And I threw out a number and he goes, man, I was thinking less than that. I'll give it for your, for my number. And I'm like, great. Sounds good. So I had an entire set. I had JT print off all the, you know, pictures of my, Hall of Fame cards, that yeah. are slab, put them in there, and I was done in one fell swoop. I did buy them in person, so I did follow yeah. the John Keating rule. Right. Um, I didn't. There's nothing wrong with that. It's an opportunity. Again, it's yeah. that's what the hobby's all about is opportunities. So. And so I was able to do that, and it was already in a binder. It was already paged right. up in right. order. Like I'm like, right. oh my gosh, this is like you know buying a house and it's already furnished. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, I didn't have to do any of the hard work. Uh, which is still fun, by the way. I, I really have found putting some of these 50 sets in, in binders and stuff. I enjoy doing that. Like, yeah. It's it's very soothing and, and relaxing. It gets pretty annoying when you get up to the 500s, you know, and you're like, okay. Yeah. Let, let's get this done. Um, but you know what, though? It, what it does is it, it's, it's what we started this whole thing all about, not just collecting cards, but learning about the history of the game. You get to see the faces of the players, you know, like, 68 if you just breeze through and, and bought a complete set of 68s or or like the factory sets now like the 68 set you wouldn't realize why do all the oakland a's you know why are all those guys in a's uniforms but their hats are blacked out because kansas they, city they had the kansas city logo and, right. and you know why are there no hats on these people during this year because an expansion year or whatnot whatever 69 or or 61 so the that, seattle pilots and the yeah. expos and yeah that's the that's part of the joy of it. Putting it in the sleeves, you get to you know you get to you you get to enjoy each card subconsciously or consciously uh, for that moment of time. You know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I've enjoyed that part of it too, yeah. just like you, uh, for sure. You know, it's almost. I talked about being kind of, not in a funk, but just in this purgatory period. But it's almost card cardboard overload for me lately. Just doing so much, seeing so many cards with the chasing cardboard stuff. And I went to right. the San Philly show right before that, and I'm just like, "Whoo!" Well, be you're fully immersed, right? Yeah. You are. You're you're in deep. Uh, somebody like me, you know, I can. Yeah, you, know, you and I have had kind of had this discussion offline about how. I put content out whenever I want to put content out. I, there's no schedule. There's no pressure. You're 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 in a little bit different circumstance because you're part of a um, you're part of whether you believe it or not, you're part of a multimedia corporation there. And right. I don't I don't say that facetiously. I just said you you have other 
people dependent on your what you're doing. So, you know, I'm in my bubble. You're out there. And you have um, X amount of uh, time to give, and you have to divvy that up properly. So, when it comes time to deal with your own collecting, I'm, I can see where you'd be burned out. Hence, this episode today. Honestly, like I, like I said in the intro, I wasn't planning on doing an episode, and I felt not obligated, but I wanted, you know, to give people an episode, uh, this week I've been, cause this week, honestly, I've gotten so many just random people. Hey man, love what you're doing. Love the right. show. Love the podcast. I've gone back, you know, one guy, I just found it and I've gone, I'm going back and I'm just binge listening to every episode. You know, we're on episode like 90 something, like we're going to hit a hundred early next right. year. And on this show, and it makes me realize there are people that enjoy this. And it's humbling, man. It really it is. Really, it's so it's uh, beyond that. It's really like, guys, I'm just a dude that likes cards, <laughs> just like you do, you know. And I love this stuff. I've been doing it, you know, John, 47 years, me, 42 years, whatever. Man. You know, God, that's almost a, that's almost 90 years between us. <laughs> Jeez, Louise, and we act like eight year olds, right? I, I would say 12, more like 12 year olds, <laughs> but um, for people to reach, to take their time and find me on Instagram and exactly and, and type a message that's heartfelt and sincere. It's awesome. And I had I, a guy reach out to me on Twitter and I didn't see it at first because of the way, whatever the way direct messages work. And he said, I saw you on so-and-so show and I really liked it. I said, well, that wasn't me because I haven't been on that show. And then he goes, well, maybe it was, Mike's show. He's talking about you. And I said, yeah, either Mike or Dr. Jim. And and, he, and, and for somebody to, to take the time to do that is just, it's crazy because I don't ask people to like or subscribe. I, I don't, you know, that's not why I do it. It's to me, I always say I do it to learn, but for somebody else to like it, boy, that's crazy because you think you're the only person in the world that might be interested in, you know, whatever I have in my hand here, which is the, <laughs> you know, the Fleer Laughlin stuff, right? Right. You know, it's like, but somebody else might say, hey, I really, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Because I, you know, I'm not original. I didn't make these cards, but, you know, and I pick up stuff from seeing your collection and stuff like that. So it's, you know, we're all, we're all, whether we, we have a microphone or camera, we're all influencing each other somehow, which is pretty darn cool. It is. And the fact that you and I have met now several times, uh, I actually, I could think, God, I wish I would have known feel like I've known you for years. I wish I would have known you for years. We've only known each other a couple years at the most. And give uh, it time. You'll get sick of me, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> I keep waiting for Julie to tell me that. Like, yeah. okay, that's enough. Oh, that's tell me know. about it, man. Yeah. When's like, the jig going to be up, right? Right. But but I've, that's what happens is you think you're you you're you're more uh, established and you're a pillar in our our content community, but there's, there's, you know, here I am doing my thing in my basement for how, for however long. And it's, that's the great thing about it is there's people out there, there's you and me on here and there's thousands of others doing the exact same thing and collecting not exactly the same way, but, you know, kind of traveling in the same, yeah, you know, traveling, traveling down in the this, same road. Yeah. They're which is, in a which different is cool. car, but yeah, yeah they're, they're on exactly. the same road. Um, that is, that is, the great thing about especially vintage because right. there's not you know a thousand parallels to chase or this or that it's not as much about the money it's not that money is not a part of it but it's it's more about the connecting the people connecting the cards getting cool stuff showing it off i get pictures sent to me hey i just picked this up what do you think and i Right. Every time I'm like, dude, that's awesome. Like good. That's yeah. so cool for you. So uh, this is a, this is a sore subject with you, but there was some, you know, I was, I grew up in the hobby in the seventies and the eighties and, and, you know, everybody understood the 52 tops mantle to be the rookie card. I'm not saying understood, but people down at my level. Uh, and I know we all know it's the 51 boom and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 But it's, it's, it's been popping up because tops, you know, in their current marketing blitz of, uh, said that the 52 tops is Mantle's rookie, all that stuff that leads you down the, you know, the typical rabbit holes. And, you know, I, I, I drew the parallel to, yeah, 51 Bowman, but 52 tops tops were more pronounced, uh, 
to collectors growing up. And the 33 Gaudi is Eddie Collins' rookie card, right? No, Eddie Collins started playing in the 19-somethings, right? So right. his rookie card is... So I posted something like that on Twitter, and then somebody who is, has much more knowledge than me, than me said, well, didn't he have a TU-206? I said he did, but for some reason, the 33 Gaudi is his rookie card. So that's like, again, they're little tiny tidbits of knowledge or, or topics that pop up and it'll, it'll never end. We'll be debating or talking about stuff and learning stuff in perpetuity, I think. Yeah. And there's a lot of nuance to it and no one can know all of it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's experts, right? And you and I, some of them are our, our colleagues on hoppy hotline. There's, you know, I went rich and Dr. Jim and, 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 you know, you with what you do, but nobody, the great thing is nobody can predict the future, which is what this hobby seems to be now, but you'll never predict the future. Dr. Jim won't pretend. Yeah. Rich won't pretend. It just won't happen. I, I like to use the word experience versus expert. Um, right. Wisdom, right? Yeah. And that I hope that I love that aspect of this hobby. I love learning new things and, oh man, I didn't even know about X, Y, or Z, you know, and right. you've taught me a ton on your watching your stuff because there's stuff that I don't never was into that you'll talk about. That's what's great about, especially guys that collect different than you. It's great to have like-minded people that you connect with, right? but watching someone, it, it's about the person to me. Like what makes me watch content or listen to stuff is who's doing it. Do I have a connection with them personally, or just like you and I, you know, just met and we clicked instantly. Right. I think, and I was like, ah, oh, I watch everything John does. It does. And then you'll talk about stuff. I was like, wow, I didn't even know about that. And the way you do stuff is fantastic too. You go really deep diving into stuff. I, I, enjoy well, I appreciate that. that. But part of that is the part of that that's calculated is like I said, I like to learn stuff. Uh, but the part of that is that's calculated is I've always believed that somebody's always going to have a bigger gun, a bigger hammer, all that stuff. I can't show off my, cards and expect people to be ood and ah because i don't have that kind of collection right so uh, i i collect uh horizontally more than vertically is what i say i have some nice cards and i'm very thankful for them but uh i i can't I, i'll never win an arms race with with someone else so it's just you try to do maybe something different right because sure. um i'm never gonna never gonna go toe to toe with dr jim and his wall so uh, I'll show you that there's 73 blue checklists cards for the top set, you know, if you didn't know that. So that's, that's the fun part about that is let's look at that stuff because that to me is just as much fun. Um, I got to see Dr. Jim's wall. Pretty impressive, huh? It was unbelievable. <laughs> did you get the, did you get, if you were, if you were a Keating, Mike Moynihan, yeah. you, what you would have done, you would have, uh, you would have snuck a PSA slab in there without him knowing it, popped it in like a Juan Gonzalez, <laughs> Oh right? my gosh! Yeah. put it in there in a place that perhaps isn't, uh, you know, he wouldn't notice maybe top right corner. Right. That, that, that would have been a Keating move to do that. Oh, uh. so, I Did wish I would have talked to you before I went because I would have totally done that. Or I would have put my uh, BCCG Fred McGriff up there. <laughs> that would have been the other. Ten know, or better? Ten or better. <laughs> it looks like a dog chewed it and it's got an, it's a nine or better. The one I uh, it's hilarious. What's great about this episode, and we'll wrap it up here, but what you guys are hearing is like John and I could have been talking on the phone and we would have had this exact same conversation. And that was really what I was going for with this episode. I was like, I haven't talked to John in a while. Let's just get together and shoot the bull. It's a little more formal maybe here and a lot less uh, four letter words on this podcast that might be done otherwise. But right. we, we would talk like this. We do talk like this. Like if we're just shooting, you know, just talking and catching up. And, right. and so I, I hope you guys enjoyed just, a, a little glimpse into that um hopefully you this may be part of that hobby experience for you where you don't get to have those conversations with people that you know um hopefully you, if you do have that enjoy it relish it uh it's a blessing so uh john any final thoughts before we sign off here um well just like as 
kind of ha- what you said. Where this isn't contrived. You and I can, you know, you call. Mike called me up while I was watching one of his episodes. I know that sounds like nonsense, but it's the it's the, it's the truth. <laughs> so be careful. Mike might call you if you're watching his stuff. But we don't have to have a script. We don't have to have anything like that. And that's what's great about the hobby is you can just there's we're not. Pre- this isn't a this isn't prepared content, and it probably shows. But it will. You know, we could do this every day for the next year and and not right. run out of stuff to talk about. So exactly. I mean, it's not all about. I don't care about the hobby stability. I told Doctor Jim that we can uh, we can do without the industry. The hobby can, but the the industry can't do without the hobby. You know, because if they all go away, you and I will still be finding stuff in um, display cases and stuff like that, or out on the road with chasing cardboard. So exactly. Um, it doesn't have to be about what's happening in the in the in the industry now. You just there's so much to enjoy. No doubt. Well, I appreciate you. Appreciate your friendship, John. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll do this again soon. I'm. I, we'll do it again soon. We'll, we might <laughs> even record it again soon. But I might be down there in January. So tell Norman to get ready. Okay. Oh man, he'll be yeah. stoked. Love to yeah. see you. Yeah. All right. Well, take care, my friend. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. All right. You're welcome. See you guys. Keep clicking.